Today's episode of the Believe in Steelers show is brought to you by betonline.ag. And Ike, the Steelers are now only a one-point underdog for Sunday's game against the Atlanta Falcons. If you want to place a, bait, a wager on that game, betonline.ag is the place to do it. 365, 24-7, whatever sport, whatever time of the day, make sure y'all go to betonline.ag. And you can see that website on your screen right now. Use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Cue the music. It's time to start the show. It is Friday Eve. Welcome to the Believe in Steelers show on the Believe Network. I'm your host, Mark Bergen, joined as always by my guy, Pittsburgh Steelers scout, two-time Super Bowl champion and 12-year veteran of the team, number 24, Ike Taylor. IT, recording this on Thursday, or as I like to call it, Friday Eve. We've got week 13 matchup, the Steelers and the Falcons. I am absolutely pumped coming off a win on Monday Night Football. How are you doing this morning, my man? I'm good. Good win for the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know. But guess what? We're back at it on Sunday. Uh, Kenny Pickett, you know, hearing from his teammates, hearing from other guys from other teams, calling the two-point play for that two-point conversion is the gap, you know. And that's George Pickett. <laughs> I mean, Pickett's that is. But, man, that's just the maturity level of Kenny uh, Pickett, Mark. You know, it's just growing right in front of our eyes. Uh, as Coach Tomlin would say, you know, in this business, you get paid and you stay in the league by winning, you know. So the development and the growth of Kenny Pickett has to be right now. <laughs> and he's doing that right now. Uh, I thought he had a few passes that were either under or overthrown. But from the most part, coming from, from, from Kenny Pickett, you know, just to be like, hey, Coach, chill out. I think I got a play that we can use for this two-point conversion. Says a lot about his growth and maturity, Mark. Yeah, and it was that RPO on the running yep. touchdown by Benny Snell that put him ahead. That drive was very impressive to me, Ike, because you're in the fourth quarter. You're trailing a Colts team that just took the lead. Colts have all the momentum. And Pickett led them down the field and scored, and it was the go-ahead touchdown to put the Steelers ahead for good on Monday night. Three straight games for Pickett now without a turnover as well, Ike. So he's starting to figure out how to play the quarterback position. You look at the stats and you say less than 200 yards. That's not that impressive, but it was what the game dictated and what he needed to do to win the game. To me, that was most impressive. I thought the Steelers played their best half of football in the first half against the Colts and they hang on to win. So, you know, can you keep that going against a Falcons team that is still in the hunt for the NFC South division, only a half game behind Tampa. So that's the matchup that the Steelers have this weekend. I can, I, the Steelers still be outside looking in for the playoffs. I don't expect the Steelers to make the playoffs this year. But if you could start to string some games together, you could make it very, very interesting. We were talking before the show, Ike. It's like the old godfather line. As soon as I think I'm out, the Steelers pull me back in. Yeah, that, that is it, just – you got to tip your hat to Coach T. And we, we always say he, he always find a way to rally his troops. So – we will see Sunday what the Pittsburgh Steelers do against the Atlanta Falcons. But just uh, Coach T, just and, – and I just go back to Doug Hodges. You know, when you look at your fourth-string quarterback mm -hmm. and you're able to go 8-8, eight and eight, you know what I'm saying? That says a lot about uh, you as a head coach and how the guys feel about you as a head coach because it, it could have went all the way left. And to pull the trigger – and say, you know what, this is where we go. We're going with Kenny Pickett. I know the Steelers Nation is used to, you know, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, um, playoffs, Super Bowls. But right now we're just in the transition stage. So time will tell. We'll see what the, the end record will be at the end of the at the end of the year. But just knowing Coach T, and I don't know how I don't know how Coach T do it, Mark, but he finds a way to get into these young men heads and get them to understand and believe. And it's usually later on during the season. So we'll see. 
But right now, just coming from your standpoint, us talking about Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett is growing right in front of our eyes. And, yeah, the numbers don't look good statistically when it comes down to the quarterback situation. But, hell, we talked about this three weeks ago on our show. We said, man, if the man don't like it, he can run it. And that's exactly what Kenny Pickett has been doing. If he don't like what he sees, he's taking off and running. So that's another value that he brings to the table for the Pittsburgh Steelers and himself. I've seen that adjustment from Pickett since the bye week, Ike. And that is an adjustment that I think that he has made to where if it's not there, get some yardage. And it's helped add to the Steelers' rushing total and keep defenses honest playing 11-on-11 football, Ike. And that's what's needed in 2022. And I want to stay on Pickett for just a second here too, Ike, because the raw numbers, the traditional passing numbers don't look great. But right. there's a stat called EPA, and I, I'm trying to expand my tool belt here. Okay. Uh, EPA is expected points added. It was the first time Pickett was positive in EPA since he came in to relieve Mitch Trubisky in week four against the Jets. So he had a positive number in EPA, and that's why I think he played his best game. If you look at just the raw stats on paper, you might not be that impressed, but when you're in the second half, they had a double-digit lead, and then they had to come back and hang on to that victory because the Colts right. took the lead of their own. Again, right. it's what is required from that specific game. And again, we mentioned the adjustment of running the ball. I also want to point out the importance of when he first started and he's taking chances down the field, and we both agree that not all turnovers are created equally. But when you don't turn the ball over, it helps your team out a ton because when your defense does create turnovers and you win the turnover battle – that's a huge step for your team to go on and win football games is winning that turnover battle. So three straight games for Pickett now where he does not have a turnover either. And again, he had a positive EPA in the Monday night win against the Colts. Yeah, that's, I mean, you bringing something new to the table right there, the EPA mark. But yeah, when you, uh, when you just break it down, you win a turnover battle and you don't, and you don't turn the ball over, you're going to wind up winning a lot of games. That's just, what it is um because you do get to control the clock and your defense is giving you extra possessions so uh, e even if you don't score sevens you score in threes and you take a time off the clock because you do know you only got three times out three timeouts a half so that's how i look at it so yeah we might not be scoring sevens but the defense is giving us the ball back and i'm not turning the ball over man i'm taking an extra six let's say five to six and a half you know more minutes off the clock I'm giving you less possessions. So now you're panicking. What you want to do? You want to throw the ball. Now you're right into the TJ Watts and Alex Hosman hand. <laughs> so that's how I look at it coming from a Pittsburgh Steelers standpoint. Yes, and Ike, let's go to the defensive side of the ball. You mentioned Alex Highsmith, tied for fifth in the league with 10 sacks this season. And I found this to be incredible too. Our guy Alex Highsmith has the most strip sacks with four in the league this season. And Ike, I think... Not only does he belong in the Pro Bowl, and right. I've been banging this drum since before the start of the season, but he has benefited from playing without T.J. Watt and understanding what T.J. Watt brings to the table. And on that final Colts drive, I, you go back and watch the tape. He's understanding how to play off of T.J. Watt now. When Watt will come flying off the edge, force a quarterback to move and step up into the pocket, and then he can then clean up. It's a team effort. And I think Highsmith has gotten better when Watt was hurt in Watt's absence. And now that Watt is back, he's even better because he's used to and accustomed to playing without T.J. Watt, one of the best defensive players in the league. What And, I, and I'm going to compare this with two basketball players, what Alec Highsmith is doing. So you got a guy, T.J. Watt, he's green like he all gas. He going 100 miles an hour. So with Alex Highsmith, has figured out, you know what? I'm a Luca. I'm a James Harden this thing. I'm a Euro step this thing. Uh, I'm going to slow my pace down. Yeah. And as soon as, 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 cause I know what TJ is bringing to the table on the other side, he ain't doing nothing but setting the trap for me. So I'm going to slow my pace down. I'm not going to rush or bull rush the offensive uh, alignment. I'm going to create, I'm going to set him up. I'm going to come off the ball slow. And when it's time for me to hit it, depending on where T.J. Watt is going, I'm going to bounce off of T.J. Watt, and I'm going to get to the quarterback. He's mastering it. He already know what he got on the other side. I got somebody as soon as – as soon. 
Lord, that's the law of people right now. You're you're good, Ike. Yeah, as 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 soon as they say hook, you know TJ is firing off the ball. Mm-hmm. And if it's two people firing off the ball, they usually end at the same level with the quarterback. Alex Hosman said, hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Since TJ is coming off the ball fast, I'm gonna pace myself with this. I'm gonna walk the ball down the court. <laughs> and as soon as I think I got a chance, I'm setting them up for this trap and I'm going. Man, Alex didn't figure something out over there, Mark. You mentioned the Euro step, Ike. I remember I pointed that out when we were watching some film last year, and I think I about blew your mind, Ike. But uh, Alex Highsmith, and I've mentioned this before, he only busts out a few times per game. The silky smooth spin move off the edge. And when he does that, it's just beautiful to watch, Ike. And again, he's figuring out young into his career how to play the sport, how to play the game. And there's going to have to figure out when he's off his rookie contract, do you want to pick up that deal or do you want to let him go? We know how well the Steelers draft and develop linebackers, but I, I kind of liken it to a few years back when in the final two seasons that Bud Dupree played in Pittsburgh, he finally figured it out and is doing a lot of the things that high Smith is doing now. And Bud Dupree went on to get paid. However, yeah, the Titans are in the playoff hunt again. He hasn't put up nearly the statistical production that he did in Pittsburgh because it's the beneficiary of playing with TJ Watt, Cam Hayward and company because of not just the pressure that they develop, but the attention that they garner from opposing offensive lines. You talking about Cam, you talking about TJ, that's a lot of attention. That's yeah. but because they can win one-on-one battles all the time. And when they do have the one-on-one battles, that's exactly what they do. But uh, you know, Alex Highsmith, he just he figured he figured it out. He cracked he cracked the code, and the code wasn't hard to crack. He I guess a light bulb just went off in his head. And was like, oh, this is exactly what you need to do. Just euro stepping, and he's been euro stepping the whole way. You know, leading the league in in, in forced strip sacks, forced fumbles, uh, top five in the league in sacks, and this is uh, three or four games without T.J. Watt. So the man, the man understanding the game, he's becoming a real true solid veteran. Um, as you would say, he's he should become a Pro Bowl veteran at that at that linebacker position. So we shall see. But yeah, Alex, you can't say enough about Alex. You know what you get with Cam. You already know what you get with TJ. But to see Alex, um, and I'm hearing the announcer say it as well. You know, they might have the best duo of outside linebackers when it comes mm-hmm. down to the quarterback. And I, I thought you brought up a great point when we talked about this last two. Highsmith's going to go up against an opposing team's left tackle most of the time, an opposing team's best lineman. So he's having this level of production regardless of who he's going up against. And it's a scary tandem because I, we talk about the pressure that Highsmith is, how he's playing off Watt. Well, if the Steelers want to switch it up and you can run stunts, but if Highsmith wants to come flying off the edge and then TJ Watt cleans up, that just really excites me. And it's just like, Ike is a defensive player. You got to be almost laughing where you get back to the defensive huddle and it's like, hey, let's race to the quarterback and see who eats first. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, the Hall of Fame warrants out. He he said it. He was like, when we, when we wanted to get sacks, we went to the right tackle side. Those was his <laughs> exact words. Unless you was Leon Searcy. Those were his exact words. He was like, Unless we play Leon Cersei, if I wanted to get a sack, I went to the left side of the defense, which is the right side of the offense. So, and that threw a light bulb in my head. I was like, so what you saying? He was like, what I'm saying is the left tackle usually is the best offensive lineman because they got to protect the quarterback because quarterbacks are right-handed. So you got to have that kind of dog to protect the quarterback because it's his blind side. I said, well, what do you know? Learn something new every day, I. And that's exactly, that's exactly what it was. Warren Sapp was an absolute dog back in the day. I can, I remember they had a, a pick six, I believe it was against the Rams and Warren Sapp absolutely demolishes Kurt Warner to respect of hall of famers, Ike. But any of our viewers or listeners who haven't seen that video, go check that out. You want to talk about just nasty, violent, dominating the line of scrimmage football Warren Sapp and the Tampa Bay Bucks that 2002 team cover two and hey guess who was guess who was the defensive backs coach on that team Ike oh Tom oh man yeah. we're having fun here on the Believe in Steelers show Ike uh keys to the game 
to me, the, the excuse me, the, the Falcons are fighting for playoff position. Cordero Patterson, who they're now using at the running back position, not the receiver position. To me, it all starts with slowing him down and stopping him in the running game. I think this offense goes with Patterson, but I like to see how Arthur Smith's finally figuring out how to utilize this guy who's been heck of a talent for a long time as a return man, but finally figuring out how to use him on the offensive side of the ball. No one's been able to figure it out during his pro career. Yeah, I mean... Um, they want to make a cameo appearance this morning, Ike. I can feel for you while the lawn guy goes by. To go from receiver to special team specialist to hell, we're going to put you at running back. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about. And to do this in the NFL, we ain't talking about college. Yeah. And to be successful at doing it. You needed to play against the Carolina Panthers couple of weeks ago you put cordell patterson at the kickoff return man what'd he do take it to the crib you you put him at wide receiver and this route running isn't exclusive like that but you get the ball in his hands fast with the wide receiver screen what'd he do take it to the crib you know what cordell i need me a running back we just going to try to push our running back right quick coach okay why not Put him at running back 110, 117 yards. He different. He different. How, how I feel like GP is, gap is, mm -hmm. that's for Dell Patterson. He different. Because he's doing that at the highest level of football. And he's been very successful. I got, every, uh, go every ahead, time, Ike, I'm sorry. Every time he touches the ball, it's always something good for the Atlanta Falcons and it's never good for the opposing defense. So to, for me, yeah, he 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 is that guy. He 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 is Atlanta Falcons. He's the Falcons. He's the Mike Vick. You know, when you know this man touches the ball a certain amount of times, something good is going to happen. Ike, you have a way with words. You were known as swagging you during your playing career. You've now, and we've got Gap, George Alien Pickens now. You created right. yet another nickname, Cordero Patterson. Take it to the crib. That should just be Cordero Patterson, Atlanta Falcons. Take it to the crib. His player right. intros, or you could make signage. Like, literally, Ike, and it's just like two or three words, and boom. You, you just created a new marketing campaign for Patterson there. But to me... That's going to be the key in this game is oh, yeah. figuring out ways to slow him down, sure. making sure you shrink the field, making sure he doesn't have the ball in space and rallying all 11 hats to the football. It's, 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 it's tough when you got somebody who use the guys who fast. They usually try to hit the outside because they don't really want to get hit like that. But six, six, two and a half, about 220. And he don't mind running at or over linebackers. I seen the man on goal line, Mark. I say ain't no way they're about to put CP on goal line for the running back. Well, I lied to myself because they showed <laughs> put it. They put it. They put him at running, and he ran two two people over to get in the end zone. I said, oh yeah, this boy he's special. Ike, one player the Steelers will not have to worry about. Uh, Second-year tight end Kyle Pitts is going to have knee surgery. will miss the remainder of the season. So talk about a, a matchup nightmare, and that was a player we loved out of the draft out of Florida. Yeah. He different. He <laughs> – that was that was Marcus Mariota's, you know, go-to guy. And they, they was lining him up at wide receiver. Look, we know you play tight end, but, bro, go at the X or go at the Z. We know you, we know you can play Y all day, but go ahead one of them too. I, I we, we feel like a corner over there can't check you. All right, then coach, here you go. <laughs> like that's that's our good. And like you say, Mark, we love him coming out of Florida. I mean, I, I thought he I, I said I think I said he was the best receiver. He's just so happy to play tight end. Yeah. That year. Yeah. I uh I know he went to Florida, Gainesville, Florida for the Gators. Right. He's now playing for the Falcons. And speaking of Tight ends in the state of Georgia, Brock Bowers, Denard Washington, Agent Zero out of the University of Georgia. They'll be on full display this weekend of the SEC championship game, Mike. 
it's got to be something in the water in Georgia with the tight ends because it's just like the size, speed, and matchup nightmares of you can catch, you can block, you can run, you can you're quick. Like it's like so it's like you're quicker and faster than linebackers. You have a clear size advantage over any DB, and it's just like if I'm an opposing defender, I'm just like. How do you want me to try to stop someone with that size and speed? Because you can't coach that. No, you can't stop. When you, when, since we're talking about nightmares, for all y'all who paying attention and listening to our show, just just look up. This is how I feel about good tight ends. They are Chucky, Jason, and Freddie mixed in one. All of them are Halloween movies. Go check them out. Oh, like, I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna top that analogy on today's show. I'm not even gonna try to. We'll go to the score prediction. I've got the Steelers winning back to back, twenty-seven to twenty-one. I think they get it done. And for whatever reason, I think playing on the road, it's just not the same amount of pressure, the same expectation of playing at home. You got the home fans. I think they could take the Falcons out of this game and just have the same recipe that that they had against the Colts. Get a get a lead early build that lead, continue to run the football. I really like the way that the Steelers have run the ball since the bye week, Ike. If they can continue that going, running back by committee, we'll see about Najee because I know he had that ab injury. If he's not able to go, I do like the way that the the Steelers have run the ball in recent weeks. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I've got the Steelers winning 27-21 in Atlanta. I'm going to stick with the Ike T. So I'm going to go 24-20. I'm going to stick with the Ike Taylor. So I'm, I'm going to go 24 20 Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, Ike, and betonline.ag, the place where you can go to place your wagers. Over under at 42. And Ike, they've got a lot of great team props on Bet Online as well. Like, you, I mean, you can gamble on literally anything. The one I really liked, Ike, because I do think this will be a close game. The largest lead for either team over under at 14 and a half. I would right. take the under. I think this is going to be a close game. And just given some of the struggles that the Steelers offense has had this season, that is an under that I really, really like. And again, betonline.ag, you can place pretty much any wager on this game. Yeah, make sure y'all go to betonline.ag, especially for the Steelers and Falcons game. But if you're just watching FIFA, NASCAR, basketball, baseball, football, make sure y'all do go to betonline.ag to put a wager in. Yes, sir. It is now time for my favorite segment of the show what yins think like we've got two today and we're going to start with the Steelers on a shortened week Terry Breedlove writes in says the NFL should try and schedule Monday night away games away teams a home game the following Sunday so the Steelers on the road back-to-back weeks I thought this was a pretty good idea Ike but what I wanted to ask you as someone who played in the league for 12 years is what's it like for a player on a shortened week where you have one less day to prepare playing Monday night and then playing the following week on Sunday? Uh, it's not, it's, it's not bad at all. I mean, the players really don't think about it because all we, all we want to do is just get on the field and build our resume. So you don't really think about the, the the only tough game is that Sunday being Thursday. That's tough. Mm -hmm. Sunday, Thursday, but a Monday playing on Monday night, uh, Monday night, you get there, Tuesday, Tuesday, you still gonna have all guys who hurt. They gonna go to the training room. Um, guys still gonna come in and work out, take care of their body. Wednesday, you back at it, but you back at it at a light, at a light pace. You know, Thursday gonna be light. So the only tough day is really Wednesday. And really mm-hmm. Wednesday, you got a short week is not tough. So, you know, those those short those short weeks, um, a Sunday then Thursday game, a Monday then Sunday game. It's just taking care of your body. And, you know, Coach T do a good job of making sure that the guys and Coach Gary, head strength and conditioning coach Gary Guimont, does an excellent job of making sure the guys take care of their bodies. You know, whether it's ice tub, massages, um, lightening up reps throughout the week for them short weeks. So, yeah, they, they know exactly what they're doing. They ain't running nobody in the ground. So, Pittsburgh will be ready. Uh, them short weeks – don't really hurt, but I will say the the Sunday and Thursdays, when you got a Sunday night game, then you come back Thursday, which pretty much everybody got to do. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's it's tough on the body. You can tell, like your your mind ready, but your body like, hold on, man. I thought we have three more days later, three more days left till we get to this Sunday again. But yeah, that's probably the toughest one. 
trans transitioning from uh, Sunday to Thursday. But the Monday, then the Sunday game, nah, the coaches know exactly what they need to do to prepare themselves. At least I know Coach T and our head and strength and conditioning coach Gary Guimont. I love the shout out, Ike. Um, I think I've told you this before. I think that the teams playing on Thursday night should have a bye week leading into the Thursday night game. It can't be that hard to figure out a scheduling way to go about doing that just for player protection and make sure everyone's good to go. And I always think with the Thursday night games where it's like you can't quite game plan the same way with three days of extra preparation. Like, it's just like, I think that things are a little bit simplified down and talent reigns supreme. It's just my opinion, but I would give a bye week in advance to the two teams playing on Thursday night. And like, it can't be that difficult to figure out the, you know, the jigsaw puzzle of what is NFL scheduling to make that happen. Just my opinion. Actually, Mark, on a sure week, the game plan becomes more exclusive. Like everybody is locked in because you don't have time to really, you don't have field time. You know, you ain't got a couple of days to be out on the field. So, you know, you go through the game plan on that short week. So you go through the game plan on Tuesday because you'll have Monday off. Mm -hmm. So you go through the game plan um, on Tuesday and you have a walkthrough on Wednesday. But Tuesday, like, Tuesday, like, you locked in on the Tuesday, Mark. So when you got that short week, Tuesday is that day where it's practice but it's a walkthrough practice, but it's all mental. It's all mental. And the guys are watching more tape on that short week because you don't have time to stay on the field. You don't have time to practice. So it's really a lock-in week. Ike, this is why I love you and you're the best. You were just like, you're wrong, but I'm going to do it in a polite way. I appreciate you, Ike. Oh, I'm all the way right but I appreciate you too, Mark. All right, Ike, we have one more what yins think. Timothy okay. Roberts writes in, and I'm going to dismantle this one, Ike, but I need to read it all the way through. He says, I think the Steelers should have kept Big Ben another year. No disrespect to Mitchell Trubisky, but we didn't need him. We should have let seven teach Pickett, and if you gave seven George Pickens, he would have had 10 touchdowns already. And I also think we would be top of the North as well. Pickett would have gotten to be tutored by a Hall of Fame quarterback. What are your thoughts? Ike, Ike, let me just jump in really quickly here. Like, salary cap wouldn't allow you to do this. What? Roethlisberger, like, future Hall of Famer. But right. I, I don't think there was any, like, when Mason Rudolph came in, he was upset, let alone if they would have brought a first-round pick. So, Ooh. like, again, like, th this argument starts and stops to me with salary cap alone. What? And it... And, and and here's the thing, too, and we've mentioned this. Anyone who's watched or listened to our show, Ike, for years saying the Steelers needed to figure out what to do with the quarterback position because Roethlisberger won you two Super Bowls. He he went to three. He's had a Hall of Fame career. Right. But in the back half of the 18 seasons, Ike, and it's a luxury to have that. But on the back half of that, when you've got Deshaun Watson coming back this week for the Browns, an all pro quarterback. You've got Lamar Jackson, league MVP, Joe Burrow, who just took his team to the Super Bowl. You've got to be developing and improving and getting better. Correct. This is no knock on Roethlisberger, but, and I, I appreciate the feedback, but this is just wishful thinking. It's whimsical and it's like a utopian world that's just not reality. So I, I, I will agree with him on this. George Pickens would have had 10 touchdowns. I will I will say that. Okay. I, I will say that. Uh because seven, that's his that's that's his personality. Give me a receiver who can be anybody anytime, and I would just throw him the ball whenever I feel like it because I like my chances over the DB chance. I will say that. I'm with but you I, there. I'm with you I, there. I thought seven was long overdue. And the reason why I thought seven was long overdue. When you're not beating Lamar Jackson, when you're not beating Joe Burrow, and you're not getting deep into the playoffs, and and at the time, it was a uh, who was the quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, Baker Mayfield. And you're not beating Baker Mayfield, and he come to your house and beat you. It's time to go. 
See what people don't understand, uh, they like to in this I would rather let go early than hold on late. Mm -hmm. And the only person I'm holding on late to right now is Tom Brady. Because Tom Brady always always has been that kind of quarterback. He's never been a scrambling quarterback. He's never extended plays. He's been a neck and up kind of quarterback. That's Tom Brady. Seven was like a Josh Allen. You know, got a strong arm, big running back. Seven wasn't running nobody over, but seven, you know, he was an escape artist for sure. So when the seven couldn't escape as much, it, it wasn't it wasn't the Tom Brady you was looking for, it wasn't the Aaron Rodgers you was looking for. Seven didn't have that in him. But yeah, I thought it was long overdue. You know, I was just looking at the AFC North. So if your Hall of Fame quarterback isn't leading your team and beating these young studs in the AFC North, it's time to go, bro. And this is what people got to understand. Professional sports will always be a young man's game forever. This is just what it is. So Seven had a good run. Of course, he's going to go to the Hall of Fame. Oh, uh, man, won me the Super Bowl in Temple, for sure, for sure. We won him the Super Bowl in Detroit. Uh, we didn't win the one in Dallas. Still pissed off about that. You just ran out of time in Dallas, Ike. If you would have, say, put five more minutes on the clock, I think we have a different result in that game. Yeah, if we didn't fumble, if we didn't fumble that yep. ball. I mean, a few things happened. We ain't going to get into that. Cause then I'll be yeah, happy. I mean, we don't need to relitigate history, Ike. But yeah. I'll say this with, with Roethlisberger, too. Um, again, 18 seasons, so this is the result of father time. But even when Mitch Trubisky was in the game, this was something I noticed in preseason where it's like, whoa, this is what it's like to have a quarterback in his 20s back there. So he just can move around as a little bit more agile. Yeah, that's real. That's real. That's that's real. And, and nothing nothing is wrong with Kenny Pickett. Like, I I think we all started. I think Kenny Pickett is starting to grow into all of us. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we we see the growth and development of Kenny Pickett right before our eyes. And Coach T had to make that. He had to make that executive decision. You know, and for Coach T just to make that executive decision. And I remember when they lost to Miami in Miami, and him and Kenny was walking off the field. Off the field, Coach T told uh, Kenny Pickett. He he made it. He made a statement to Kenny Pickett, and I was like, "Damn, look at that!" Like he he made a he made a statement to Kenny Pickett, like, "Don't even trip on this game. Uh, it's days like this. Better days are coming." And when he said, it, "I was like, damn, that's very encouraging, especially not only for me as a fan." But to understand what your young quarterback just went through and to walk with him off the field and be like, bro, don't trip. It'd be days like this, but we're we going to get better. Well, like, it's encouraging to me with Pickett, too, because he's getting the valuable game experience right now. Oh. Malik Willis filled in a little bit for Tannehill, but still probably not quite ready. And then some of the other quarterbacks, like Desmond Ritter for a Falcons team, I think in other divisions – He'd probably be playing right now, but the Falcons are fighting to make the playoffs in a weak NFC South division. So then I look at, okay, we all think that this incoming quarterback class is full of studs, but they're going to be very raw. And the only quarterback who's really, really playing well from last year's draft is Justin Fields. And maybe you could argue Trevor Lawrence is finally turning the corner. Right. But you need to go through some of these growing pains with a young quarterback Kenny Pickett is getting that valuable experience now to where in years two and three, if Kenny Pickett is the real deal and the guy we all think he is, the Steelers team is going to be back and loaded because you can load up the team around him with the draft and with salary cap allocation that you won't need to pay a top level quarterback while he's on his rookie deal. And you could talk about, again, I, I don't know what's going to happen in 2023, 2024, but if Pickett is worth his salt, the Steelers will be back in contention in, in a short period. That's the hope. Well, well, Mark, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny's in a better situation than Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. Absolutely. He have, he have, a, he have a, a former defensive league MVP. He got a Hall of Fame defensive tackle with Cam Hayward. He has a safety who, if he stays healthy, probably make the Hall of Fame and make him Fitzpatrick. Mm -hmm. 
He has a coach who is going to the Hall of Fame. He just had a general manager who just drafted him who will go to the Hall of Fame. He has a a receiver named George Pickens sitting over there who's a dog. You got Deontay made the Pro Bowl last year, and you got Moo, as everybody would say in the Steeler Nation, Fairmouth, who's sitting at a tight end position, and you got a first round running back. So his he's in a totally different situation. So I think now he sees that like, damn, I really do got it good. Let me not turn the ball over. Like Ike and Mark said on their show, let me run the ball if I can't get through my one, two, three percent uh, progression. And that's exactly what he's doing. But he, he's in a heck of a situation right now, a good situation. And it's beyond this season, Ike, because even in our wildest dreams, whether it was Trubisky or Pickett back there, we knew the Steelers this season weren't going to contend. And I'll I'll say that. That's my personal opinion, Ike. But it's Agreed. the development of future seasons. And if Kenny Pickett, again, is worth his salt, you see it quickly with young quarterbacks. We saw it with Russell Wilson back in the day. We saw it with Lamar. We saw it with Patrick Mahomes before he got his massive contract extension. When you can load up on the team around a quarterback on his rookie contract – and Ike, you know this because you were still in the league when the league almost underwent the 2011 lockout. When they yeah. redid it, when they redid the the CBA, they put a cap on what rookie salaries can be, and that helps a team if you can develop a young quarterback. He quickly outperforms what yeah. he's making on a rookie salary. That's the hope with Kenny Pickett. No, that's that's exactly what you know. Don't forget, now Kenny is a he's a he's a, a older a older rookie. He's 24 years old. You know, let's 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 not forget that part. So he's a very mature. So he's gonna he's gonna mature faster than I think most because he just understands what it is to be a professional, and he shared the same facility with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So he Kenny Kenny is ahead of the curve when it comes down to being a professional. Now he's learning on the curve right now when it comes down to to the on to his on field play, and I think he's doing a very good job of it. So. Yeah, we shall we we shall see. But I think Pittsburgh towards the end of the year, I don't think too many teams won't play Pittsburgh because they're gonna spoil they're gonna spoil a lot of uh, chances when it comes down to the AFC. And I think Pittsburgh gonna head in the right direction, end of the year real good, especially for the draft because you know you want it only one of a kind. IT is in the building, baby. <laughs> IT, let's rip through some week 13 picks. And that was what Yins think. Please send us your questions and comments. We answer the best ones on each show of the Believe in Steelers show. Week 13, though, Thursday night. We've got Bills at Patriots. Bills, a four-point road favorite. Ike, we were talking before the show, too. This AFC East division is loaded. But the Bills do have some good news, too. Not for this game specifically. But Von Miller says earlier this week on his podcast that he's got some meniscus damage, but it's not an ACL injury. So he's hoping to get back by December the 11th, the Bills game against the Jets. To me, this is huge that it's a meniscus, which usually if it's torn, usually like four to six weeks, heck of a lot better than if it's an ACL, MCL, one of the cruciate ligaments in a knee. So the Bills get some good news this week. Yeah, if I'm fine, though, I, I mean, it's hard to tell the football to chill out, but I take my time coming back. My son just went through the same thing, and because he's young, it only took two and a half, three weeks. You know, fine is uh, you know older when it comes down to being a football player, so we shall see. But you know, the Bills, the Bills, they find ways to win. You know, when they first started at the beginning of the year, Mark. You know, they were slinging that thing. It was 300 yards here, 350 there, 300 yards here, 350 there. But, you know, later on in the season, and we were talking about this in the season, like you get you you don't have as many possessions because these defensive coordinators, they start locking in and the weather does get cold. So it's going to be a good game. You best believe Bill Belichick will not make it easy for him. It's going to be a low-scoring, hold-the-ball Patriots game run the ball Patriots game because don't forget that's exactly what the Patriots did the Bills a couple of years was it last year or the year before 
where they ran the ball 53 times. Let me, let me oh, talk. yeah. Wasn't the weather really bad in that game too, Ike? Wasn't it like raining the? I think it was raining the whole time in that game, and the Bill or, or the Patriots were just like, we're not yeah, even. I think they had like three pass attempts. Yeah, they had, they, they were. I think they ran about uh, either it was four to three up, fifty three times, and wound up winning the ball game. And maybe it was only three completions, Ike, but it was something absurdly low. Yes, yes, there was the yes. So I'm sure they just want to hit that button on repeat when it comes down to playing the Bills, the Patriots. But you know, Josh. Josh on the whole, he on a whole different level. His his swag on a whole different level this year. Like, like Josh last year, he knew he was the man. Well, he thought it was the man. Like everybody was telling him he was the man. He was like, but this year, this year, Josh, like, oh yeah, I'm the man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like he woke up and all of a sudden, like, oh, I'm the man. And that's exactly how he playing. Like. The man, and it's just scary because we say this all the time too. He's a football player. He just so happened to play quarterback. Usually, quarterbacks are just quarterbacks. Like Matt Jones is just a quarterback. Kirk Cousins is just a quarterback. Tom Brady is just a quarterback. No, that young man Josh Allen is a football player. <laughs> you know, if I want to line Josh Allen up at outside linebacker, I can line Josh Allen up at outside linebacker. If I want to line Josh Allen up at tight end, I can line him up at tight end. But guess what? He has a cannon of an arm. He's super good. He just so happened to play quarterback. Well, there is an outside linebacker named Josh Allen in the league. I remember we had last year Josh Allen sucking Josh Allen. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. You're right. Yeah. Like, um, the Bills are 0-2 in division games this year. This surprised me because the Bills have an 8-3 and record right now. Three straight AFC East games for the Bills. So we're going to see where they stack up pretty quickly. To me, though, you got Josh Allen on one side of the ball and a struggling Mac Jones. And when I listen to other Patriots fans say, I know when your quarterback struggles, but let's go to Bailey Zappi, a rookie quarterback instead of the guy you drafted in the first round a year ago. I'm just saying I'm going to go with the Bills to cover on the road here, but I think it's the struggles Mac Jones, and look at how the Patriots are using him. They're kind of keeping the training wheels on this offense, and it's a ball control. Let's run the ball, control the clock, right. and try to dominate the line of scrimmage. I just think this Bills offense, even with Josh Allen's elbow injury, is going to be too explosive, and I'm going to take the Bills in this game. Yeah, I'm going to take the Bills as well. It's just, it's just uh, you know, with the Patriots, I just – it's always been the receivers. Um, it's tough for them to get a receiver, like a receiver, like a top dog receiver. Uh, running, you talking about one of the best running games ever. The Patriots will run the ball down your throat if you let them. That's it. They got running backs by committee. Mm -hmm. But um, that's why I always question on drafting quarterbacks high. It's, it's just. The expectations are real tough as a as a quarterback, unless you're coming into a Kenny Pickett situation, you know? So, yeah, I got the bills, man. Ain't nobody stopping Josh Allen. Yeah, Ramondre Stevenson has been good for the Patriots this season, Ike, and then Damian Harris as well. They do have a stout running game, so we'll see. That's Thursday night. Excited for that one. We're both taking the bills. Browns at Texans. Deshaun Watson's first game back in Ike. For as much as the Browns have struggled this season, to me, it's really been the defense, not the offense. Because when Jacoby Brissett's playing, you're through 12 weeks. Browns offense ranked fourth in DVOA. The defense, though, 29th in defensive DVOA. So Watson can't really help them there unless they hang on to the ball and use his ability to run, which they kind of already have with Nick Chubb. And then I don't know what the Browns are doing with Kareem Hunt or if they want to try to shop him in the future but to me it's like i am excited to watch this um curious to see what the reaction is going to be with watson and everything but this is why take the allegations out for just a second a lot of owners were mad for people we've talked to around the league ike the right. owners were mad because the browns guaranteed watson that 200 plus million dollar contract guaranteed every penny of it right. and he'll be back on the field this weekend for the browns
Yeah, I got the Browns winning. I mean, it's just a good situation. Just hand the ball off to Nick Chubb. If, if Deshaun Watson is starting this week, he's in the perfect situation. Hand the ball off to Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Um, I saw Joku make a, a, a crazy one-hand catch oh. last week for, for a touchdown. Uh, Peoples Jones has been balling as well. Amari Cooper, he dropped one late, wound up coming back to seal the win uh, for the Cleveland Browns. So they got some studs over there. They got some studs over there, so we shall see what Deshaun Watson do. But just going the the latter half of the season, they don't need Deshaun Watson to do much. Just use his legs when needed, because he's more athletic than Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, and the Browns have struggled this season. Not expecting them to make the playoffs. It's a defense you can run the ball on, but this is a Texans team that Ike. In my opinion, the Texans are the worst team in the NFL right now. Would not be surprised if they get the number one overall pick. Because six-game losing streak, and they've been outscored by 73 points during that losing streak. So I'll go out and take the Browns as well Correct. on the road, and we'll see what Watson does in his debut in Cleveland. A lot of other great matchups to get to, Ike. Titans at Eagles. Eagles a five-point favorite at home. Jalen Hurts, an MVP candidate. Eagles sitting with the 10-1 and record, best in the NFL. The Titans team, though, that we all know with King Henry can run the ball. It's going to be a, 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 a great matchup, Ike, and the Titans coming off a loss as well. Who you got in this one? Because the, the Titans aren't flashy at all, but they can pound the rock. Who you got between Titans and Eagles? I'm taking the Eagles. I just, I just like the way, I just like the way Jalen Hurts is just going about it. You know, and the Eagles went into Green Bay, and it was tough for them to win that ball game. And that's what you want to see. You want to see a team who is hot, come out in a hostile environment with the win. And it's all because of Jalen Hurts. Like, nothing is bothering Jalen Hurts. Um, he's not turning the ball over. He's running the ball when he needs to. And he's throwing the passes when needed to convert on these third downs. And by the way, we just picked up two dogs sitting in the middle um, off a of free agency to beefing up our line of scrimmage on defense. So this is what this is. They, they all in this year. It's for Philadelphia oh, yeah. It's Super Bowl or bust, and it starts with Jalen Hurts, and Jalen Hurts has been the guy who's been driving this plane, and he's been a heck of a pilot, so I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, even though I do like the Tennessee Titans personality from their coach, just physical all day, we're going to fight all day, you know. Uh, we go, Hey, hey, we're going to go to a bar, we're going to drink some beer, and we're going to see who can punch who in the face the hardest and the, may the best man win. That's just, that's the Tennessee Titans personality. But just overall, and you, and you start to see teams kind of lock in on uh, King Henry. If people have been paying attention for the past couple of weeks, they start to figure things out to keep him from, from going with the 100 and plus yards per game. So what to eat? Sorry, I finished your thought. I'm sorry. I thought no, you were no, I, I just got the Eagles winning this game, Mark. I think you convinced me, and I'm with you that the Eagles are all, all in. You bring in the Dominican Sue. You bring in Linval Joseph. You trade for Robert Quinn. You solidify your front four that was already scary with Jordan Davis, who's working his way back from an injury, and he now has a 21-day uh, stretch. He just got activated the 21-day practice window, so he'll be back from injured reserve here soon. You also have Fletcher Cox, so it's like, who are we going to try to block up front because that is a scary front four in Philly defensively. So you can dominate the line of scrimmage there. We saw what this Eagles offense could do against our beloved Steelers earlier this season, Ike, and that is also equally as scary. And like I, I could name other players, but to me, the two game stretch when the Eagles slipped up, it was the loss of the commanders and it was very nearly losing to the Colts. To me, what those games signaled was the Eagles weren't, protecting and hanging on to the football in those games offensively and it forced them to lose the turnover battle part of the reason why the eagles have been so good this season they lead the league in takeaways with 23 so if they take the way the, uh, the ball away defensively and they hang on if they just hang on to it offensively because the offense is good enough just to move the ball through the ground on its own they can beat you in a variety of ways to me this is the reason why the eagles have been the favorite in the nfc all along and right now again i mean Still a lot of football left. I think the Eagles are going to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl this season because of how dominant they've been for those reasons. They hang on to the football, and with the reinforcements that they have, it kind of reminds me 
what the Rams did a year ago when they brought in Von Miller and OBJ to say, hey, we're all in. We're going for this thing. We're going to win the Super Bowl to hoist the Lombardi. Yeah, the Eagles, I mean, for me, it's just Jalen Hurts. The man ain't turning the ball over, and he's, you know, he's he's creating plays, and when third down come, if he don't like what he see, he's running. So and people forget how how good of a running Jalen Hurts is. And, oh, and yeah. Listen to his teammates talk about him in the weight room in the offseason. You know, them offensive linemen say, man, he's squatting with us. So, so Jalen Hurts, you know, he just have the love and respect. They respect his teammates respect him. They don't like him. They love him and they respect him. You you can you can just see, you you can just see because one he's he always holding himself accountable, whether it's a good play or a bad play, he gonna hold himself accountable. But not only he's the quarterback, he's one of the boys, and that's what I be telling people. Like when you're the quarterback and you one of the boys, you protect the king. Like that's 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 like get. Get off. That's our franchise. That's the key. You can just see it. The man got all day to sit in the pocket if he want to. Because the offensive linemen wish you would come around him. And you just 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 look at when Jalen Hurts runs and he slides and he gets down. Start paying attention to all the offensive linemen. Right, right, right on his neck. Come and get up. We got you. Let's go back to this huddle. That says a lot. You know, look at other teams with other quarterbacks where they figure, look at the Jets. Look at look at Zach Wilson and company. When Zach go down, look how many offensive linemen come around him. Bro, bro, the tape don't lie. It don't lie. But, yeah, getting back to them two, I'm rocking with the Philadelphia Eagles over the Tennessee Titans. All right, Ike. Packers and Bears. Packers are four-and-a-half-point favorite. Got to ask you right off the top before we make our pick, is it time for the Packers to shut down? Aaron Rodgers for the season. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead on, shut him down. Shut him down, man. Let 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 love rock. You know, we we seen plenty, plenty of what Aaron can do. And right now Aaron is hurt. So, you know, that's a good excuse to shut him down. Let's see, let's see what love. At least at least let us see what love can do. Then let me know exactly what I need to do with Aaron. So I, I can trade love or find figure something out with love. I can do something with love and keep Aaron. I'm like Aaron, like. Yeah, you're right. You is the guy. Let me go ahead and get you another receipt. Matter of fact, let me get you two more receivers. So, yeah, shut him down. He hurt. He ain't going to like it. He's going to go back to California. Let him go back to California as he should. You know, but sh- shut him down. Shut him down. That's all I would say. Shut yeah, him down. I- and he, I mean, I don't know. He might have a change of heart. Like, he was talking good about love in the press conference. Like, Aaron, Aaron was showing love some love. In the press conference, so Aaron Mitchell might be able to stay. Like I didn't, I didn't play enough games with this injury I had on my thumb. Mm-hmm. Maybe it might be time for me to shut it down. Y'all go see what the young man can do. Once the Packers are statistically eliminated from the playoffs, I'm with you, Ike, and make sure that that thumb is right in 2023. So hopefully you can go on one final run right. in the back half of Aaron Rodgers' Hall of Fame career, and then right. if Love plays. Perhaps you can drive up his trade value to get another team to want to trade for him. That would be my logic in doing this. And if the Packers aren't going to make the playoffs anyways, and they've got eight losses on the season, see what your your other guy can do to try to increase his trade value to get something back. Or yeah. in a crazy world, you know, would you try to trade Aaron Rodgers? That is probably more of a pipe dream, but that would be my logic to see. You get love out there, see what he what he can do. You can make sure Aaron Rodgers is good and ready to go for next season. That would be my logic. I mean, you'll get a lot of you'll get a lot of trade value for Aaron Rodgers. I oh mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I I am gonna tell you this right now. I don't know what Tampa's gonna do next year, but I can see I can see one of the two. I can see Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady going to San Francisco 49ers. Tom a- Brady or Aaron Rodgers to the 49ers. So what happened? So they would let Jimmy G go because he's due to become a free agent. Would they oh, just keep yeah. Trey Lance on the on the roster? Yeah, because Trey Trey coming off that massive injury. Mm-hmm. So we we gonna see we gonna see with Trey. But and Tom Tom really wants to go back home one year. Mm. And Tom, Tom ain't gonna have to do much. They, they'll tell Trey Trey, we just need you one thousand percent healthy. 
we just gonna give Tom a one year deal. Tom never, Tom never had one line. He had that kind of defense. He did. Oh, but you got C Mac, you got Debo, you got you got Kittles. Oh, oh Lord, oh, with that defense sitting over there. Yeah. Jeez. Poor Jimmy G. Ike. He's always getting Brady sloppy seconds. Poor Jimmy G. Because it's Tom Brady. You should. <laughs> if, if I was Jimmy G, I wouldn't mind getting this sloppy seconds either. I'm just saying. I had I had to say it. The joke was right there for a layup. Uh, Ike, I was saying how Brady, if he leaves, my crazy theory is that, you know, a lot of people are going to be inquiring about Lamar Jackson if they don't figure out his deal with the Ravens. I'd be shocked if he left Baltimore, but. The Bucks could be a possibility. I think the Panthers could be a possibility. I mean, we could run through all the teams that will need quarterbacks. The Panthers are probably going to need a quarterback. Um, I'm excited once we get to the offseason. It's the coaching carousel, the quarterback carousel, and the, the preparation for the draft. I, I think part of the reason we've gained the followership that we have is we usually have some pretty good insights of what's going to happen across the league because it's like putting a puzzle together. Yeah. I mean, I'm remembering this though. Tom Brady, Rogers to the 49ers. I, I wrote this down. Yeah, one and two for sure. Okay, we need to. Um, so hang on. Bears, Packers, uh, Packers four and a half point favorite. I got it. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Packers. The Bears yeah. are just in full tank mode. Traded Roquan Smith. Traded Robert Quinn. Um, uh, Darnell Mooney also now out with an injury, and the Bears just trying to reload, get field some talent and help in the off season. I'm going to take the Packers against the bears. They've owned the bears for pff, forever. Now it seems. Yeah. If Justin Fields is playing, I was going to take the bears, but Justin Fields yeah. isn't playing. So I'm going to go with the Packers. We could have a Jordan love Trevor Simeon matchup or if I don't wish injury upon anyone, Jordan love versus the immortal Nathan Peterman. I I'm putting this out there. You heard it here first. If that happens and okay, I, you're smiling right now. Uh, dolphins at 49ers. I'm not sure if Taron Armstead, the tackle for the dolphins is going to play a key off season acquisition. 49ers, a four point favorite. Ike, you've been on the 49ers all season long and there's people around the league that really think that the 49ers are the true contender in the NFC. This is one of the best matchups of the weekend. I'm going to take the 49ers at home, four-point favorite. I think that they play a different style of game oh. than the shootout football that the Dolphins typically play. I'm going to take the 49ers at home. Oh, give me a look. They bully ball on defense. That's all they play. They, they bullies. They, give me your lunch. But my mama, give me your lunch. But my mama, give me your lunch. And tell your daddy to come too with your mama because I'm taking the money out of their pocket too. That's what the San Francisco 49ers defense be doing. If you right. it's, it's 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 five and six to the ball, like mm -hmm. we 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 used to call it. I can't say what. Let me see how. <laughs> throw a throw a. We used to we used to say, "Hey, meet me by the ball carrier, so we can throw a party on that whatever." And that's exactly and that's and that's exactly what the point now. Let me throw a party. Let me, whoever got the ball. They throwing a party on you because it, it's, it's going to be that many people trying to get get to that ball, and of course, you know, the offensive power. It's all about it's all about Jimmy G though. Jimmy G come to play, they got action every game. Jimmy G don't come to play, then. But, but Shanahan does a good job of balancing his offense and getting his players the ball. C Mac, uh, Debo, and Yo Kittles. He does a, He does a real. He does a real good job. Even Jennis last week. Jennis last week. The other receiver. He wound up balling out. Mm -hmm. Week. So, yeah, I'm taking. taking it. Is it, it, the style? You know, Miami finesse. The, the day they the finesse. I be. I've I been saying this. I'm saying Miami gonna get into the playoffs, and and it, it ain't gonna be the same. They fin, they finesse. They finesse. They finesse. They run. They run into some bullets. So I'm taking for San Fran. And Debo's so good at the yak, Ike, and that's yards after catch. You get the ball oh, in his hands, and it's just special. 100%. Debo different, though. We'll see about Armstead as well, Ike. And the left tackle is especially important because Tua is left-handed. Correct. Keep that in mind. That's 
The right tackle is important with right-handed quarterbacks. The left tackle, when Armstead went out of the game, totally different for this Dolphins offense. I'm pointing this out there now. A few other games to get to, Ike. We've got three more. Chiefs at Bengals, playoff rematch. Chiefs a two-and-a-half-point favorite on the road. Question I have, is Jamar Chase back for the Bengals? That, to me, might decide this one. But the Chiefs, going to go back to that EPA stat. Averaging an NFL high, 1.23 points of EPA. That's extra points added per offensive drive. No other team has above 0.52. So the Chiefs more than double better than the next team offensively with this stat. Mahomes is having statistical line that's comparable to his 2018 season. Like this Chiefs team, I don't know why time and time and time again, we doubt them. And Patrick Mahomes in November and December has yet to lose a game during his NFL career. It's it's going to be awesome. And I cannot wait. This might be the game that I have circled on my calendar that I'm most excited to watch this weekend. I'm going to go with the Chiefs against the Bengals. We'll see what happens, though. I cannot oh. wait. If Jamar Chase plays, I'm going with the Cincinnati Bengals. If Jamar Chase doesn't play, I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs. Easy enough. Easy enough. Um, again, can the Chiefs get revenge after that playoff loss a season ago? And we all love Joe Burrow, too. So Sunday night, Colts at Cowboys. Cowboys an 11-point favorite. Ike, uh, I don't know. 11, 11 points is high, but if you want to put um, – this on a money line into a parlay. Uh, I just think this Cowboys defense is as dominant as there is in the league led by Micah Parsons and company. The pressure that they generate up front, I think is going to cause problems for a Colts offense that has really struggled this season. So I don't know that they cover, but I do like the Cowboys to win on Sunday night. Yeah, I got a Cowboy. I think they'll win by uh, 11 for sure. Cowboys play the Colts for sure. It, it, it's just too much. Too much firepower, too much Michael Parson. You got Michael Parson. Michael Parson is a true. Michael Parson is a franchise quarterback. He just so happened to play on defense side. Mm. Michael Parson stepped into that building. He 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 raised the expectation from everybody. We all knew that Dak Prescott was just a natural leader for the Dallas Cowboys. But as soon as Michael Parson stepped into the he, he raised the standard. That, the, the young man as a rookie, this is exactly what he did. Like, he's the best player on that team, you know. So every, everything, whether it's offense or defense, everything goes through Michael Parsons. In every respect, second year, young man, everybody from his teammates to everybody across the league, you got to know what Michael Parsons is. See, you you can say what you want to say about your money, like, oh, I got I got this amount of money, I'm paid. But when you got a guy like Michael, Michael Parson walking to the building, be like, oh my gosh, like, oh, here, Lawrence, here, Lawrence Taylor for real. Like, this dude wow. really is that good. Wow. And, and you know, Lawrence, Lawrence just went to the quarterback. Michael actually get to check people. So, pushing them, just letting Michael Parson just rush 70 plays. Michael, we don't want you covering nobody. We just want you rushing. Man, that man had 25, 30 sacks a year. Easy. But he's just different. It, the reason why he's different, he got God-given superior talent with a firework ethic. That's what made Kobe different. That's what made Jordan different. That's what made Tom different. It's the LeBron James. It's the work ethic. Guys with superior talent that don't take their talent for granted and they maximize it every year, usually in the offseason. This is exactly what Michael Parsons is doing. You know, Quinn's still trying to figure ways out how to use him. He, he like this guy is so talented. Where the hell do I put him? If I want to put mm -hmm. him at, I can put him at corner. If I want to put him at safety, I can put him at safety. This guy don't come around once every thirty years. This this kind of guy, once every thirty. I look at I look at Michael R. I. P. Sean Taylor. I look at the impact, the impact of one player to a whole organization. I look at Michael Parson, how I looked at Sean Taylor. Ike, you were mentioning Dan Quinn. He's the Cowboys defensive coordinator for any of our listeners and viewers who didn't know that. Uh, you mentioned Lawrence Taylor. That, to me, is the moment where I'm like, you have my attention, considering I would probably say Lawrence Taylor 
If he's not a top three football player of all time, I definitely put him in top five all time. So when you put those two in the same sentence, okay. you have my attention. Just think about it. Lawrence came out to the game to watch the young man. Y'all been talking about this young man comparing him to me. Let me see what let me see what this dude really like. Came out in person and saw what he was like. It was like, okay. He verified. Okay. Says a lot. But y'all take it, Dallas. All right. Monday night, Ike, NFC South matchup, Saints and Bucks. I do not know why. We know what Andy Dalton is at this point in his career. Right, right. Saints continue to stick with Andy Dalton when Jameis Winston is healthy. I don't think either of them are the answer long term. Correct. I don't know why you don't at least put Winston out there, considering before his knee injury, he was playing strong, stout football. Right. I think you have a higher ceiling with Winston. And again, because the NFC South has been so bad this season, every team is still in that race. Yeah. Huge game on Monday night. Bucks are three and a half point favorites at home. I think coming off what was a bad loss to the Browns, the Bucks right. regroup against the Saints on Monday night. I mean, and I'm not going to go against Tom Brady in this game, but I just don't understand why the Saints continue to stick with Andy Dalton at the quarterback position. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know if Jameis says something to somebody. Like, yeah. me and you on the same page. I just don't get it either. Like, we already know what we're going to get from uh from Andy Dalton. And, yeah, I, I think the ceiling is a little bit, not much, but a little bit higher coming from Jameis Winston to Andy Dalton. Um, I think they got the, the young, talented Chris Olave. I think they got some young, talented receivers that, you know, I think Jameis can get the ball to. Whenever they want to go throw deep, they'll throw deep. I think he'll open the offense up. So now you'll see a Kamara being the young Kamara of old if they had Jameis Winston, in my personal opinion. Um, you put Andy Dalton back in the game. Now you're asking, you know, Alvin Kamara to block something he really don't want to do. Just give me the ball, and I'll make seven or eight people miss. But, yeah, um, I'm going I'm going with the Bucks. I don't think the Bucks going to lose 10 in a row. Um, they 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 just want to get in the tournament. That's all the Bucks want to do, get in the tournament, and they need this game right here. Yeah, and if they win the division, Ike, they'll at least have a home game. So it's like it, Bord only knows what can happen when Brady and company get there, and we'll see. I mean, this is an NFC South division, Ike. I think that you might have a sub-500 team or maybe like a 9-8 and eight team win this division. It's just been that it's been that bad this season, so we'll see, but – Big game on Monday night. IT, you're the absolute best. This has been the Friday Eve edition. Always right. a pleasure doing the show with Swag and you. I want to thank you. I want to thank the Believe Network, our producers of, uh, or excuse me, our sponsors of today's show, betonline.ag. And I want to thank the listeners and the viewers for taking the time to watch us. And please give us your feedback so we can feature you in our What Yins Think segment here on the Believe in Steelers show. Make sure y'all tune in to the Believe in Steelers show. Mark, I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody in Believe who's working behind the scenes. I want to thank BetOnline.ag for sponsoring our show. Appreciate y'all as well. I want to thank the viewers for tuning in, watching us. Uh, make sure y'all give. Make sure y'all go rate and review us. Please give us a five star. Uh, also, want to uh, keep 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 coming up with the questions uh, to our segment that we like. What years think? We love that segment. It's one of our favorite parts. I want to appreciate everybody for tuning in and listening to us. For swagging you, Ike Taylor, I'm Mark Bergen. Thanks for watching the Believe in Steelers show. We'll be back next week to recap the Steelers game against, woo, against the Falcons on Sunday. We'll be back next week. Until then, take care and so long, everybody. Peace.